This black box contains everything you've learned in this series of Arduino tutorials. Inside, I've got an Arduino Mega and six of these L298N motor controllers, which can run 12 separate motors. They're all connected to the Arduino's PWM and digital pins. On this side, I've got direct pins to 12 analog inputs for sensor control. And for each pin, there's a dedicated ground and power pin so that I can easily attach sensors. It's the same deal with the eight digital pins here, but these go ground, digital, digital, live, four times over, which is perfect for ultrasonic sensors. Now these ones are interrupts. They're very special. If you trigger an interrupt, such as when a sensor changes its value, then you can stop immediately whatever the Arduino is doing and run something else. That's really useful if you want an emergency sensor like a power shutoff button without having to write specific code to check that sensor all the time. Now I've got two interrupts available here. I've built all this so that I can make complex trains layouts really quickly. And the layout in this video uses almost all the tricks and techniques I've shown you in the previous tutorials. We've got a light sensor, five motorized points, an ultrasonic sensor, an LCD screen, power to two tracks simultaneously, and some infrared sensors which are managing our wagon decoupler. We're going to use all this to hot swap three wagons between two locomotives in a continuous sequence. Here's how. Here's the code block. Now this time around the code is huge. There are 440 lines to control the nine motors, four sensors and the LCD screen. But it's still just a state machine. We write little sections of code that run on their own and when they've done their job, the Arduino moves on to the next section. All those states are listed here under the enum variable. If we use an enum, we don't have to remember the specific number for each state. So what do these states do? Let's figure that out with a state machine diagram. There are five core states that work in a sequence. The red locomotive reverses, picks up the free wagon at the station and takes it to the siding. Next time it moves, it goes to the decoupler. And when the locomotive is detected, we look for the wagon. And when that's detected, we uncouple the wagon from the locomotive, which shoots the loco forward. Then we switch the pair of station points, and that's our core set of actions in the code, and we can reuse these multiple times. From here, the red locomotive will reverse again, pick up the other wagon at the station, and go to the siding. When it's detected in the siding, it stops. The siding points switch to shut off any power to that track, and the Arduino waits. It's waiting for the green locomotive to trigger its own sensor, which is an interrupt. Every Arduino has a few of these, and they allow you to cut into any other part of your sketch and run a little function. In this situation, we're just checking that the case is waiting, and then we switch the loop points to bring the green locomotive into the station. When that happens, we can use these four cases again. After that, the green train needs to reverse, but not to the siding. So we make it reverse just for a few seconds, then drive it forward for five seconds. After that point, we switch the loop points again to separate the green train's power from the station. We switch the siding points to bring power from the siding to the station. And then the red locomotive starts the whole sequence again. Go to the coupler, detect the wagon, uncouple, switch the points, then reverse back again. Then the green train takes over, and so on, and so on. After the state machine in the code, there are a few really basic functions to determine which infrared sensor we use on the decoupler, depending on whether it's the red train or the green train uncoupling, and another to control the track power to the station, again, the red train or the green train power, depending on where we are in the sequence. These functions are what allow us to reuse those five core cases in the state machine. Otherwise, we'd have twice or even three times as much code as we do already. Now, because we're joining two power wires to the same piece of track, there's one little trick we have to do. On this rail, at the end of the station, 
I've just put a small piece of paper between the track connectors. This prevents power from the main loop coming back to the station on this rail. It's important, otherwise your red loco power will interfere with the green train when they're both running. Enough chit chat. This is what you've been waiting for. Let's fire it up and watch it go. So thanks for following this sequence of Arduino tutorials for LEGO trains. Hopefully there'll be more in the future, covering Bluetooth control, power functions and more. Until then, have fun with your projects and thanks for watching.